Hi everyone, Dr. Larson here. In this video we're talking about the big picture of autoimmune disease. Now the autoimmune diseases are becoming a widespread pandemic in our society, you know, in the modern world, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere else as well, not just America. Um, here's a few of them, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, scleroderma, and on and on and on. I think there's over 200 now, probably more by the making of this video, I don't know. But if you look back at these, Basically, they're diagnosed by what tissue they're in. So like in Hashimoto's, that's in the thyroid gland. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, that's in the joints, and the synovial membranes and fluids of the joints, and then on and on and on. So what basically is it, it, it is, is white blood cells are attacking your own tissue. So it's like your body is attacking itself. The question is, why does the body get to this point where it's trying to beat itself down and there's lots of different theories on this, but I just want to go over some things that, like I said, are the big picture to this whole process because you have to look at it from like a 30,000 foot view and say, well, what are we doing to ourselves today that we weren't doing 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 100 years ago, because we weren't having these things back then, you know, 50, 100 years ago, maybe rarely, right? Now it's just, this, it's an explosion of all kinds of issues. So, Number one, compromised gut barrier. So your GI system is supposed to break food down and small particles get in into the blood and then travels to the liver and goes to the rest of the body. But now we have this compromised gut barrier. Various reasons, many of the things that I'll talk about on this video are contributing to this. So a compromised gut barrier is definitely one of the problems with pretty much any known named and blamed disease today. Uh, two, you lose tolerance to different types of foods. So um, it goes hand in hand with this cold gut barrier thing. It's not necessarily the food as the problem. Now there is pretty trashy food today compared to 100 years ago. Uh, different kind of um, genetically modified things and um, you know Twinkies and these different things that we have now. But you lose tolerance to foods because your immune system gets activated. The reason why it does is because you have this compromised gut barrier. Again, I said you're supposed to break down food like this into something like this. And that's what's supposed to get through your bloodstream. But now we have these big holes, these big gaps in the gut, right? They're microscopic, but I'm just, you know, imagining this, that there's these big gaps. So big food molecules get through there. Well, your immune system correctly attacks that and tags that as an issue. But the longer that goes on, the, the, the longer that inflammatory process goes on from you constantly eating that food, whether it's egg or dairy or wheat or gluten or you know whatever it might be, the common food allergen, soy is another one. The longer you keep eating that, the more your body is activating an inflammatory process to that. Your immune system is being activated. So therefore, it gets worn out and it leads to autoimmune and different things. Uh, number three, lose tolerance to chemicals in the environment. So this is also a trigger of this, okay? It's not just losing the tolerance, but chemicals are a trigger of autoimmune. They're one of the pieces of the, of the puzzle that overall breaks the body down. You know, it just beats it down day after day after day. So chemicals, now things like heavy metals, and some of the heavy metals are mercury, I find this a lot, lead, you know, I've done some testing on people and find high lead on them. Aluminum, tin, cadmium, and more. There's many different heavy metals. These are some of the more common ones. And then we start to get into chemicals. And is it any wonder why we don't feel well? I mean, just think of the sheer uh, number of chemicals that are in our environment today. It's, it's mind-bending. It's, it's just amazing. So we have things like toluene and benzene and formaldehyde and things like paraquat that were banned but we still find in residues today, right? Uh, TEP, I just found this on my wife. Tetraethyl pyrophosphate. She was having just her neck like locked up. And this is an organophosphate. It's an insecticide that a lot of people are spraying around their houses now for bees and bugs and different things. So we're finding this more and more. It's called TEP. Um, atrazine, which is an herbicide. We have dieldrin, which is an insecticide. It's an organochloride. So we have organophosphates, organochlorides. These are all poisons, and yes, they will not kill humans immediately, but these things build up in our tissues, in our body, and how many things can we be exposed to over time 
and expect our bodies to keep functioning at a very high level. I mean, it's different for every person, right? And then we have number four, underlying faulty physiology. So really common here. Right? This is why we run some of the blood testing that we do. So we have faulty blood sugar. If your blood sugar is all messed up, if your pancreas, if your diet's terrible and you're stressing the heck out of your pancreas, or you have an infection in your pancreas or a different kind of chemical or metal in there disrupting that pancreas, you're going to have faulty blood sugar. We look at uh, hormone imbalance as well. Uh, we look at liver congestion. This is like ubiquitous um, among the population, just a congested gallbladder liver area. Um, altered adrenal function as well. The adrenals are just being hammered. And your adrenals are your fight or flight uh, anti-stress glands. And then we have low high thyroid. I call these people the, the uh, canary in the coal mine. Just having your thyroid gland is so important for every single function in your body, every single cell. And if you have altered, low or high, it's usually low, but it can be high as well. I have, I have numerous stories about people who had high thyroid. Um, but when you have altered thyroid function, it impacts your metabolism, your body's ability to make energy, brain fog, gut function, constipation, everything. So it's going to lead towards faulty gut production, backups numbers uh, one and two, right? It all plays in together. And number five is chronic hidden infections. I love this topic. Um, it's so fascinating to me because we harbor all these crazy infections all over the place. Things like uh, viruses like Epstein-Barr, um, cytomegalovirus, and some of these things that are chronic, low-grade infections that are just kind of beating our, our, our immune system and our cells down day by day by day. We have Lyme, uh, parasites, fungus, bacteria, all of these things people harbor on a, on a daily basis. Now this is my own story. I got rid of uh, an infestation of Ascaris, which is a kind of a, like, like a roundworm. I know I'm disgusting, but I felt so much better after I got these things out of my body. And if I had kept them, let's say I kept them for another 30 years, what kind of health potential am I looking at uh, 20, 30 years from now if I kept those roundworms inside of me? I mean, slowly they're just degrading my cells. Slowly they're degrading my tissues and my body's ability to make energy. And they're beating up on my immune system year after year after year. Uh, so if you want more information, drlarson.com, if you want to have a consult with me, if you're interested in being a patient, uh, that's where you go as well. I have information on my blog there. I, I write um, articles, make videos like this. So if you like this, um, check it out. I'll see you soon.